at 12. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. Here in the Alamo City and across the country, thousands gather for Women's Rights March in protest of abortion laws. The details coming up. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Whew, we are in the midst of October. What is the rest of the weekend? What does your work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 6 a.m. this Sunday, October 3rd. Thank you so much for joining us. We're mixing it up, starting the day off in the newsroom. Yeah. Look at this. KSAT. And we're wearing pink today. All three of us are wearing mm -hmm. pink in honor of awareness for October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's right. I know our very own Sarah Spivey mm -hmm. also wearing pink. Sarah. I am, yeah. A really a great month to uh, just bring awareness to breast cancer out there. A lot of events going around San Antonio this month in support of breast cancer research. Outside right now, temperatures are comfortable up in the hill country. It's 63 in Kerrville, 66 in Bandera, but it is muggy around San Antonio. 70 at the airport, 70 in New Braunfels, 70 in Port SA, and there are areas of fog. Visibility is lowered to about four miles at Port SA, so, and down to three quarters of a mile in Pleasanton. So some fog this morning, uh, but in the forecast today, we're expected to have a really nice afternoon. In fact, uh, in our backyard barbecue forecast, temperatures are going to be climbing into the upper 80s this afternoon. It's going to be nice. For some reason, my graphic has decided to pause, but I'll be fixing that. And we'll be back to talk about uh, what you can expect this uh, week. In fact, a cool friend is going to move through today. That's going to make things pretty pleasant for the week ahead. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, what can only be described as a tense situation at a neighborhood on the southeast side. Now, we believe the situation started around 1040 last night. At last check, there was a big police presence. We're told there was even SWAT on the scene. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live from downtown. Jonathan, you checked out the scene in the 6200 block of South New Braunfels. So tell us, what did you see? That's right, Sarah. We were just there moments ago. Unfortunately, we just caught the tail end of that police activity, just clearing the scene already. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like just moments ago. This is what we know so far. Information is limited, but we do know that this this police activity at these apartments, the Almadena apartments, started at around 2.40 p.m. overnight and concluded just a, a few moments ago, around four, uh, 5.30 this morning. All this taking place at the 6200 block of South New Bronx. As you can see there on your screen, EMS, SAPD, and even SWAT was on scene. But of course, this case remains under investigation. Max, Sarah, when, as I mentioned, information is very limited, but we're going to be staying on top of this and updating you as information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Now to the latest, a San Antonio woman is behind bars after doctors reported her for child abuse. San Antonio police say Christina Vestal was arrested after a young girl was brought to the Children's Hospital for multiple injuries to her head, face and body. The reporting person says they got a text from Vestal saying the girl fell off the couch. However, after further evaluation, doctors didn't believe Vestal's story and notified police she's facing a felony charge of injury to a child with intentional bodily injury. Her bond is set at $15,000. A scary scene for Bear County firefighters who had to respond to flames at a chemical testing and storage facility. So take a look. The call came in around 2 yesterday afternoon. This is Intertech on Shady Falls Road. Fire officials say the flames started in the shipping and receiving area. A hazmat team that you just saw on your screen, they were called in to check on any potential chemical reactions. Luckily, everything determined to be safe. Also lucky, no injuries reported. Investigators now working to figure out how and why this all started. In your morning headlines, women's rights rallies filled the streets of downtown San Antonio yesterday. Hundreds marched in opposition of Senate Bill 8. But these marches weren't just limited to San Antonio, and they weren't just across the state of Texas. These marches took place across the country. That's right. These marches organized by the Women's March come after one of the most restrictive anti-abortion laws in U.S. history that recently took effect here in Texas. CNN's John Lawrence has the story. That's the main message at more than 600 Rally for Abortion Justice marches Saturday in cities across the country. 
the government has no right to control the freedom of for women to make their own decisions, their own decisions about what to do about their health care. Last month, a Texas state law that bans abortions after six weeks. Most people don't even know they're pregnant by the time they're six weeks. With no exceptions for rape or incest went into effect. What Greg Abbott and the Texas Republicans are trying to do is an open defiance of the Constitution, and they will hear our voices today, y'all. The Supreme Court, which denied a request to block Texas's bill, returns Monday. Activists say they're worried other states will follow the Lone Star State's example and weaken Roe v. Wade, the 1973 landmark ruling. I'm just curious what has changed in that time frame that makes our Supreme Court justices think that we have changed our minds about that. Several anti-abortion events are also being held Saturday. We are going to be there as a voice for pro-life women. It is up to all of us to make sure that women know that there is help for them. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Organizers for the abortion rights rallies applied for a permit for 10,000 people in Washington, D.C. Well, big news on the medical front. Johnson & Johnson says their experimental vaccine against RSV is also effective in preventing pneumonia in older adults. The company says it is 70% effective in preventing RSV symptoms and 80% effective in preventing pneumonia. The company will now test the vaccine in a larger phase three trial involving 23,000 people. The vaccine has already been given breakthrough therapy designation by the FDA, which should help speed up its development. Well, according to a new court filing, former President Donald Trump has asked a federal judge to restore his Twitter account. Trump's attorneys say Democrats in Congress and the Biden administration have pressured the social media company to keep Trump's account banned. His attorneys also point out that though he was permanently suspended from Twitter on January 8th, Twitter has allowed the Taliban state in Afghanistan to maintain an account. Twitter has not yet formally responded in court. Headed to the West Coast, a major oil spill off the coast of Orange County yesterday, prompting the closure of ocean waters in Huntington Beach. Now, Huntington Beach Mayor Kim Carr said a leak from an offshore oil production operation leaked 3,000 barrels of oil. That means it's about 126,000 gallons of oil. Unified Command placed at least 1,000 feet of booms into the water, trying to block additional oil from coming ashore and entering the harbor and marshlands around Huntington Beach. Time now, just about 6.07, 70 degrees out. Still ahead, the story of one woman who is dedicating her life to rescuing thousands of beagles neglected and abused in the name of research. And you feeling lucky this morning? Okay, yes. Did you did you buy a ticket? I did. All right, ooh, this is gonna be good. The Powerball jackpot has been drawn next on GMSA. Find out if you won. I will say I won a little bit of money. Okay. I'll reveal it. And you showed up to work. And I showed up to work. I'll reveal the amount that I won when we come back. Sarah Spivey will have her forecast as well. Check your tickets. The winning numbers for an estimated $651 million Powerball have been drawn. If you were to won $651 million, would you have come to work today? No. Okay, so far, <laughs> no word yet if there is a winning ticket. The winning numbers are, you want a drum roll? There you go, 42, 38, 47, 52, 28, and the big number, the Powerball, that is one. So yesterday's jackpot, the 10th largest in U.S. lottery history. So the drawing is Powerball's sixth largest ever, I will say. We mm. don't know if anyone won, but we can announce that I won $8 <laughs> on my Powerball mm. ticket. Honestly, that's a feat. Yeah, Sarah <laughs> right? Spivey, did you buy a ticket? No, I didn't. I saw mm. I, okay. I asked my husband to go buy some tickets because I was a little busy yesterday, but it didn't happen. But that's okay. Maybe next time. Maybe there wasn't. It's okay. A maybe no one. Maybe there wasn't a, a winner. Oh, we don't know yet. It could go up. We yeah. Don't know. We just don't know. What we do know is that we're going to get some drier air into San Antonio this week, and so it's actually going to feel really pleasant outside uh, for most of the week, especially in the morning hours. But today is going to be a bit muggy, as we see a weak, cool front move through. 70 degrees outside, partly cloudy sky. Northwest winds at about five miles per hour. Meanwhile, it's 
significantly cooler up in the hill country. It's 64 in Comfort, 63 in Kerrville, 68 in Hondo, 71 in Divine, 70 in New Braunfels, and 74 at Stinson. And in some places, fog has developed. Visibility is down to four miles in Port SA, but a wider view here, and you can see that it's down to three quarters of a mile, less than a mile in Pleasanton, less than half a mile in Gonzales, in Victoria, in Beeville. And over the next hour and a half, two hours or so there could be some patchy fog around spots in the metro area just because those temperatures right close to the dew points. All right, on the radar and satellite, quiet morning, no rain uh, for most of the state of Texas. However, look up to the Great Lakes area. You can see all the rainfall there and across the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, but there's a front, a weak cool front that's going to be moving through today. The key word there is a weak cool front. It is not going to be bringing us cold temperatures, but it is going to allow for a bit of a drier weather in the forecast. Let's take a look at these temperatures across the nation. You can see that it's in the 40s in Wyoming, 40s in uh, Nebraska. Very nice fallish morning up there across parts of uh, the Midwest. But here in San Antonio, as I mentioned, we're dealing with some fog. So that front is going to be moving through today, falling apart as it does so. It'll actually increase the cloud cover, mostly cloudy skies for most of our day as that front approaches. And there is an off chance for a stray shower, uh, but the chance for rain today is only 10%. So not even as much coverage as we saw yesterday. And even yesterday, there really wasn't all that much rain out there. Otherwise, it's going to be a warm one. High temperatures in the upper 80s. 88 in San Antonio, 92 in Del Rio, 92 in Catula, and 91 in Pleasanton. So today's forecast again calls for increasing clouds. It'll be mostly cloudy by a noon. North winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun will set at 717, and it's going to be pretty mild. But after today, our dew points are actually going to drop, and it'll become less humid in the week ahead. Uh, dew points will be in the upper 40s and even low 50s. So what that means for us is cool mornings and comfortable afternoons. Uh, by uh, Tuesday morning, temperatures will be close to 50, 60 degrees, and we'll be in the 50s by Wednesday morning. Afternoon highs, though, will be on the warm side. They'll be in the upper 80s, close to 90 degrees, but again, less humid. No rain in sight over the next seven days. And that's a bit of a bummer because October is one of our rainy, rainiest months and we just don't see much there in the forecast. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 614, 70 degrees now. The Roadrunners remain undefeated, Max. That's right, 5 and 0. Oh, we're going to have the highlights in our next half hour. And some people call it the industry's secret using dogs as lab rats after the break one woman's mission to save thousands of beagles from a life of abuse and neglect cosmetics cleaning supplies baby products mouthwash deodorant shampoo medical devices and medicine and the list goes on and on of everyday items you probably have in your house right now that are tested on animals. That's right. In fact, 115 million animals suffer at the hands of researchers and laboratories across the world each year. But here's the thing. It's not just mice or monkeys. One woman now dedicating her life to rescuing thousands of beagles. David Sears has the story. These crates are packed with beagles and rescued from a lab in Spain. More than 40 others get their first taste of freedom in California. Just like most of them, Echo was born for one reason, animal experimentation. Product testing in her eyes caused her to go blind. Ellie was rescued by the Beagle Freedom Project when she was just a puppy. She was scheduled to be euthanized because they were done with her. All of these dogs were saved by Shannon Keith. I asked a laboratory worker once, why beagles? And she said, well, it's because they're so trusting and forgiving. Shannon now dedicates her life to saving beagles. At any given moment, there are at least 70,000 dogs in laboratories in the United States being used for testing. Shannon says the dogs are not only born inside the lab, some shelters sell their dogs to them. And although the list of animal tested products is large and diverse and the company's well known, the labs are often hidden. This is what I call the industry's dirty little secret. Whistleblowers are key in finding out what's going on inside. Just before we started doing this interview, I got a whistleblower letter. I'm writing about several puppies who nearly all died because of the conditions they were in. Most of these puppies died and they died a horrible death. 
Shannon will investigate and file an animal cruelty lawsuit, but she says the best course of action is to raise awareness. That's why she's developed the free cruelty cutter app. A scan of the barcode reveals if the product is animal tested. I say everyone has a little activist in them, right? Many nationwide chains carry cruelty-free products, and these products can also be ordered online. I'm more connected than ever to and, and committed more than ever to leading a cruelty-free life, to making sure that our house doesn't have any products that are tested on animals. Most labs aren't overseen by veterinarians. There are vet techs who work on these animals, and they're not required to have any experience. Also, most state anti-cruelty laws contain explicit exemptions for animals used in experiments. The FDA says 92% of drugs found safe and effective in animals don't even make it out of the clinical trials because they're either ineffective or too harmful in humans. David Sears, KSA 12 News. That was a really interesting story. Download that app. Yeah. Time now, 621, 70 degrees out. So Tom Brady wasn't the only goat in Boston this week. Oh, weekend. look at that. We'll play on words. <laughs> we have the story next. Good morning and welcome back. A big weekend for football. In case you missed it, don't worry. We're going to have UTSA highlights in just a bit. But Boston really is the epicenter of football this weekend, and they know how to make a guy feel special, especially if that guy is former New England Patriot Tom Brady. Check out this parade of goats Saturday ahead of Brady's return to the city. These goats had on Patriots gear as a way to honor Boston's former greatest of all time. Still the greatest of all time, just no longer Boston. Yeah. Brady took the Patriots six Super Bowl wins, now plays with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, also won a Super Bowl there, and helped that team, like I just said, get their first ring in a minute. So today he plays the Patriots, his old team. Some of those goats look a little fat. Okay, are you fat shaming goats? <laughs> I'm just saying those jerseys look tight. All right, so Bud Light organized the goat parade to celebrate the game. Not a bad way to hang out. I'm just so happy that you had that read, and I didn't. <laughs> Time now, 625, 70 degrees out. Major police activity at an apartment complex on the city's southeast side. What that scene looked like just moments ago, coming up next. Well, nearly 70 million Americans have yet to receive the vaccine. Next on GMSA, the latest on the pandemic. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. It is 629 this Sunday, October 3rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We are all wearing pink. I'm saying this is pink. I think it shows up as you know, pink on I, TV. I think Sarah Spivey uh, has a different opinion on this. She I, does. I think it's a like fuchsia tie. Fuchsia. Okay, I'll Which go with fuchsia. Purple. But either way, we are wearing pink or fuchsia for a good reason. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Exactly. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Temperatures out there are in the 50s in parts of the Hill Country. Uh, but here locally around San Antonio, we're seeing about 64 in Comfort, 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's 74 at Stinson, 73 in Gonzales, and 72 in uh, Castroville. We're actually going to see a cool front move through today, but the biggest impacts from that front are not going to be cooler temperatures, rather drier air going to be in place, which is going to make for a really pleasant week ahead. But for now, we have to deal with the humidity, and in many spots out there, Fog is starting to develop. Visibility is down to six miles at Port SA, down to less than two miles in Pleasanton, down to a quarter of a mile in Kennedy, down to a quarter of a mile in Gonzales, and down to half a mile in Beeville. You know, we had quite a bit of rain this past week, so if you want to go to the car wash, maybe your car needs a wash. Uh, the last next couple of days look great for that. You'll get a few days out of a nice clean car here. Even today, only a 10% chance for a stray shower, but in the week ahead, it is going to be dry. The mornings are going to feel Feel great this upcoming week. I'll have a look at those morning lows coming up in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a major police presence at an apartment complex on the city's southeast side. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Hey, good morning, Jonathan. We understand the scene recently cleared. What have you been able to learn? Good morning, Sarah. That's right. Uh, the scene just cleared, but San Antonio Police Department spending several hours at those apartment complex. We're still waiting to receive details of what took place there, but this is what the scene looked like just a few moments ago. 
Major police activity happening at the 6200 block of South New Braunfels. That's the Almadena apartments you see on your screen located on the city southeast side. Police responding to this scene around 1040 p.m. last night. The scene was cleared roughly around 530 this morning. As you can see from this video, an intense situation there. Police focusing their attention at one particular apartment on scene. Well, of course, was EMS, San Antonio Fire Department, and even SWAT. Of course, Max, Air, this case remains under investigation. We'll update you as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Some top stories we are following this morning. Two northwest side shootings, four possible victims and no suspects arrested at this time. San Antonio police responding to two calls located less than 10 minutes apart. The first one was at the intersection of Fredericksburg Road and Medical Drive around 1 p.m. yesterday. Officers tell us the victim was standing at the corner of the intersection when someone drove up to him asking if he had any drugs, then shot the man in the leg before taking off. The victim was taken to a hospital by another driver who saw him laying on the ground. Police say there might have been another possible victim. That's right. And a couple hours later, police called to Danny K Drive. That's near Babcock. Police say two men from out of town in the 30s and 50s, they were parked behind an apartment complex. A third man came up to the vehicle and shot them. Now, they were both taken to the hospital, both luckily with non-life-threatening injuries. The suspects in both shootings still unknown at this time, but police do tell us these shootings are not likely connected. Well, cigarette is to blame for a mobile home fire on the city's south side. It happened around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon in the 12,800 block of Apple White Road. Firefighters say a man put a cigarette out in a trash can, then fell asleep. A blanket then fell into the trash can, catching fire, then spread throughout the mobile home. The homeowner was able to make it out safely. The fire caused around $25,000 worth of damage. The American Red Cross is helping the homeowner. We are obviously still in the pandemic. The most recent San Antonio COVID dashboard reads that we are at a moderate risk level, but we are improving. With the winter months on the way, it does seem like we are still far from done with this pandemic, along with the potential of a winter wave. There's a lot of questions about booster shots, kids vaccines, and now the potential of that Merck antiviral pill. That is why Dr. Robert Leverance with UT Health San Antonio will be joining us on SA or leading SA this morning at 8 a.m. If you need questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading SA section of KSAT.com. Well, the United States has reached a heartbreaking COVID-19 milestone following the summer surge of the Delta variant. It comes amid a sweeping push for vaccine mandates across the country, one state even requiring vaccine for all students. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the story. President Biden remembering the lives lost to COVID-19 after the pandemic death toll in the U.S. topped 700,000. The president saying on Twitter, we must remember each person and the life they lived. Nearly 70 million Americans have yet to receive the vaccine. Vaccination is our best defense against COVID-19. We have the scientific tools needed to put an end to this pandemic. In New York City, unvaccinated teachers have until Monday morning to provide proof of vaccination or face possible termination. I am certainly a thousand percent willing to lose my, my career over this. Now, California's governor announcing the state will be the first to require COVID-19 vaccines for students and teachers after full FDA approval is granted for each age group. Parents coming down on both sides of the issue. I will for sure pull my kids out of school. If it's mandatory to get into school, then of course. But many parents are eagerly awaiting vaccine approval for children. According to a new report by the Kaiser Family Foundation, one third of parents with kids aged 5 to 11 years old will get their kids vaccinated right away once eligible. Meantime, in Missouri, frontline workers at Cox Medical Center in Branson are being given personal panic buttons, which call security when pushed. That's after the number of assaults on hospital staff tripled over the past year. Staff have complained of being spit, um, grabbed, held, um, a variety of other things. So we're very thankful to have this as an option to help keep our, our staff safe. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Time now, 635, 70 degrees out. We're still ahead on GMSA. We got a lot of football to talk about. Cowboys, Texans playing tonight. They're not playing each other, playing each respective teams. And the Longhorns played yesterday. We have all the highlights. Hey, go Horns.
Are you a scary movie lover? Yes. No. We have the best no? job for you if you are, though, this Halloween. We will tell you what it is. We'll tell you about it next. I thought you said you love Halloween movies. I love Halloween cute movies. Oh, like Halloween Town. Yeah. It's a great movie. I tweeted out yesterday. Halloween Town, top 10. <laughs> Taking a live look out there. It is October. It is 70 degrees to start your weekend. What does a work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Hey guys, I'm Alicia Barrera. And I'm RJ Marquez. And we're the hosts of KSAT News Now, the new streaming show, which has been airing every Wednesday at 11 a.m., but now... We're actually expanding out a little bit more. On Monday, that's when we're gonna start going a little bit more, a couple days out of the week, and we have a lot of interesting things we're gonna be talking about Monday at 11 a.m., trending stories. Of course, always asking for viewer input. Maybe some talk about the Cowboys. Let's see oh, how they do. Yes. <laughs> Is Dak gonna wear a mint green suit? That's my biggest question you about know, this game. As long as he's on the field, I'm happy. <laughs> yes, and we also have our Tasty Taco Challenge, and I think, you know what, I'm gonna go out on a limb oh, and gosh. say that this is the most important food challenge in the history of food. Oh. Just playing, actually, no, it's not. <laughs> um, but no, we want you guys to vote. Of course, we always want you guys to vote, and then we're gonna reveal our top three next week. Which I'm excited about, so six down to three, and then remember to sign up to be a KSAT Insider and subscribe on Facebook, that way you get notifications for any time KSAT News Now goes on air. All right. streams. So yeah, we'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. And again, we're going to be on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app, and of course, KSAT's Facebook page. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. Happy October. Halloween. October. Fall vibes. Anyway. Just <laughs> around the corner. If you are a fan of horror films, listen up because we found the perfect job for you. That's right. Dish Network is asking for one scary movie fan to embrace the night terrors and watch and review Stephen mm. King films. The best part, you'll get paid $1,300. Here's what you need to know if you are interested. You will have to watch 13 movies, originals, or remakes. All right. So if you're selected, you need to document which films you watch and which one do you like the most? The least, you have to actually track your heart rate during jump scares and share your experience on social media. This is a lot of work. To qualify- Okay, it's $1,300, <laughs> it's not that much work. 13 movies though. <laughs> to qualify, you need to be 18 or older and a US citizen or permanent resident. If you get selected, DISH will send you their survival kit. Okay. It's come with a blanket, popcorn, candy, and some Stephen King paraphernalia. They also give you a oh. Fitbit to help you track your heart rate. That's good. To learn how to register, just look for the story on the homepage of KSAT.com. Would you want to do this? No, I don't like scary movies. I feel like that's a lot of hours. Mm. And I, I, it's just going to make me be jumpy all the time. Jumpy. Yeah. I mean, we get up at like 2 in the you're morning and you're like going through your house and it's dark. That is and true. You, and then you walk outside and you hear like a cat and you're like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> I please do not, that sound not effect. That I haven't already. I think Stephen King could use that sound effect in his next movie. Yeah, no. I, ah, ah. <laughs> Sarah's Sarah's Spivey. Spivey. <laughs> <laughs> That's very specific. Mm -hmm. So Sounds I'm not like saying that it hasn't happened before or anything. <laughs> I know, right? That was very specific. Three hours the ago. cat in the background was my favorite. <laughs> ah. I promise you Nora wouldn't scare you. Oh, it's oh. just so sweet. Your cat. Oh. So sweet. <laughs> All righty, let's take a look outside uh, with the... Oh, wait, Sarah Spivey, five. would you want to do the challenge? You know, I'm not a huge scary movie person, but I would do it for 1300 bucks. Me for too. Sure. For sure. Okay, so yeah, outside right now we've got partly cloudy skies, 70 degrees. Those dew points and the temperatures are right near each other. And so we're seeing this morning some areas of patchy fog. Now, not everywhere. As you can see on this camera out at the airport, you can't really see any fog. But it's more so outside of the city center that we're seeing some visibility reduced to 7 miles in Kerrville down to uh, 7 in Pleasanton. But that's actually improving. Visibility in Pleasanton was down to half a mile uh, just a little while ago. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Gonzales and a quarter of a mile in Beeville. But outside right now, muggy. That's that's one word to describe the weather. It's 73 in Del Rio, 73 in Catula, 70 here in San Antonio, and 73 in Gonzales. Our average morning low this time of year is 65. So we're about 5 degrees warmer than that. In some places, 10 degrees warmer than that. But it is cooler in the hill country. Those higher elevations, 61 in Kerrville and 66 in Rock Springs. A wider view here and you can see that there are parts of the nation that are enjoying a crisp cool fall morning. It's even 48 degrees Dalhart there. Uh, this is all behind a weak 
cool front. Keyword there being weak. We are not going to see a big drop in temperatures from this. In fact, in the afternoons, it's going to be uh, near 90 degrees in the week ahead. But the big thing is the mornings will be more comfortable because we're going to have drier air moving in place. And behind that front, you can see that drier air in Amarillo and in Lubbock. Dew points are in the 40s and even low 50s behind this front. So we're going to get some nice drier air moving in place. So that's going to push aside that uh, rich Gulf of Mexico moisture. And we'll be looking at a really pleasant week ahead, although it will be dry without any significant chance for rain. Now looking at the high risk future cast for the day today, those clouds are actually going to increase as that front approaches. So during the uh, afternoon, we'll have a mixture of mid level and high level clouds. There's even a small possibility for a stray shower about a 10% chance, but we're not banking on any rain today. Uh, for most of us, it'll be dry uh, with just those increasing clouds to really account for for the front and the north wind at five miles per hour. Then by the start of the morning tomorrow, it'll be a few degrees cooler right around 67 for tomorrow morning's low. And then that drier air will really push in tomorrow so that by Tuesday morning our lows will be really pleasant. We'll be near 62 on Tuesday morning, even in the 50s on Wednesday morning, and that's more like what we usually expect this time of year, and it's going to feel great in those early morning hours. It is still going to be warm though in the afternoons this week, as I mentioned, near 90 degrees. Today near 90 degrees as well. Uh, we'll be at 88 in the afternoon, and it'll be pretty muggy still today. Again, tomorrow that drier air is really going to push in. Sun will set at 717 and it's going to be a mild evening. Less humid in the days ahead. Tons of sunshine for us. Not really seeing any uh, significant rainmakers in the forecast over the next seven days. People are always asking me, okay, well, where, when's our first real cold front going to happen? There's a possibility middle of, of, of uh, October. I'm seeing some things. Ooh. So we'll, we'll continue to update. Yeah. It's going to get... Cold, cold, not mm, just cold. I love your sound effects this morning. Between the scared and the, ooh. ooh it's hey, it's October. Okay. Getting crazy. Stand by. <laughs> 646, 70 degrees out. Max, we're talking football. We are talking football. We are talking highlights. We're talking lowlights. Don't look at your screen if you're an Aggies fan right now. But we're going to have everything you need to know to start NFL Sunday. Also, taking a look outside in your roads this Sunday morning. Traffic looking like it's flowing pretty smooth out there. Ooh, there's no, no one on the roads. <laughs> if you need to be out in the roads, now is the time. <laughs> All right, here we go. Big day for the lottery. Pick three, seven, five, eight, fireball two, daily four, zero, one, four, six, fireball three. Catch five, 15, 16, 21, 24, 30. Texas lotto numbers, one, nine, 14, 23, 29, 41. And here's the big one, Powerball at $651 million, 28, 38, 42, 47, 52, Powerball 1, Power Play 2. Will there be a winner this time? You want some money. $8. Big winner. <laughs> we'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday after a phenomenal football Saturday. Rashad Wisdom, UTSA Roadrunners here at home at the Dome last night, looking to go 5-0 for the first time since 2012. And... Best part, they were hosting the winless UNLV. Frank Harris, a laser. Joshua Cephas in stride, nine-yard touchdown. 7-0 Roadrunner second quarter. Game tied at 10. Rebels driving. Ooh, Tariq Wollin steps in front of the pass. That is a pick at the 49-yard line. First corner over the game. Roadrunners capitalize on the takeaway. Cap a 12-play, four-minute drive. One-yard touchdown from our own Sincere McCormick. 89 yards rushing for the Judson product. UTSA leading 17-10 at the break. Let's go to the second half. After Jamal, Sam records another pick. The Roadrunners double the lead. There we go. Frank Harris, deep ball to Corian Clark, and he is in for the end zone. 31-yard touchdown, 24-10 UTSA. Cameron Friel comes up with the sack on fourth down. Wait for it, wait for it. Moving in the pocket, can't move quick enough. He is down. The Roadrunners win it, 24-17. Next up, taking on Western Kentucky next Saturday. 6 p.m. So how about it for our Roadrunners? 5 and 0. Oh, another local team we want to highlight. UIW on the road last night looking for their straight second Southland Conference win in a row taking on Northwestern State. Doesn't take long for the Cardinals to get on the board. First play from scrimmage Cameron Ward. He's won a couple of awards already. Slinging it. C.J. Hardy slips past the defender. Takes off down the sideline. 47 yards all the way down to the two-yard line. Ward finds Hardy again. Two-yard score. 7-0 oh, UIW. 
Just 32 seconds into the game. Offense staying hot. Next possession, Marcus Cooper splits a pair of defenders. When you're being chased by the safety, it's usually a good sign. 60 yards to the house. Cardinals win it 38-27. That's all I got to say. Number 15, Texas A&M return to Kyle Field looking for a bounce back win. They just lost to Arkansas last weekend. So this weekend, taking on Mississippi State. Aggies down 3-0 in the first. Zach Calzada pick, but the young QB atones for it. Beautiful ball. Jalen Watermeyer, 11-yard touchdown. A&M has a lead 7-3, but with just over a minute left. Will Rogers find a Makai Hoke. Diving touchdown grab. Bulldogs going up 17-13. Let's go to the third quarter. Rogers to poke. Wait for it. Standing in the pocket. Rodgers to poke once again, 20-yard touchdown pass. Ensuing drive, though, Zach Calzada. Wait for it. He has all kinds of running room. Look at that. Making the defender miss. Number 10, looking for more than 10. He gets the first, running down, and boom, he gets a score. 25-yard run. Aggies right back in it. They're still down 24-19. Calzada goes down in the end zone, so the Aggies get their second straight loss. There he was. That's where he went down in the end zone. Second straight loss, 26-22. to but don't worry, still a young season. All right, on to our other Texas team. After putting 70 on the board against Texas Tech last weekend, the Longhorns on the road taking on TCU. Let's pick up in the first quarter. Horns down 7-3 handoff. This guy, Bijan Robinson, he actually was a Heisman candidate in the beginning of the season, and he has really proven his worth. 27 yards, evading defenders, one of his two touchdowns in the first half. Texas leads 23-17 at the break. Third quarter, Casey Thompson dialing it up. Jordan Whittington, the Cuero native, goes up and gets it. Great grab, 28-yard field goal set up for Cameron Dicker. Boom, 26-17. Fourth, Thompson finds Whittington on a slant over the middle, outruns the defense, 32-yard touchdown, 32-20. to Kendra Miller powers in for a three-yard score. It's a little scary. Makes it a five-point game, a little over four minutes left to play, but Texas grinds out the rest of the clock. Bijan Robinson does Bijan Robinson things, making defenders miss, fighting for the extra yards, gets that first down, finished with 216 yards on 35 carries. Three straight wins for the Longhorns. They take the big W, 32-27. So we mentioned Texas Tech. We mentioned Longhorns beat them, put up 70 last weekend, but they are back, and they're back with the vengeance. Texas Tech making the trip up to West Virginia. Taking on the Mountaineers. Game tied at 20 late in the fourth. Quarterback throwing it up. Kalen Geiger, beautiful adjustment. 42-yard grab. Taking down West Virginia to the 38-yard line. 18 seconds left. Giving the Red Raiders the lead. Good for the 32-yard field goal. Tech wins it. Look at that. 23-20. Big win for Texas Tech. And don't worry. I know today is a big day for a lot of football fans here. We're going to start off. Texans at the Bills. Not looking great. Davis Mills playing the Bills. We'll see if he can bring Texans back to relevancy. Speaking of relevancy, though, undefeated Panthers taking on the Cowboys. That'll be interesting. Both games at noon today. I'm very excited to see this matchup personally because the Panthers have been doing great, but they haven't played great teams. Cowboys have really been tested in and out. Remember that week one loss taken on the Bucks. So we'll see if they can atone for that. Taking down the Panthers today. Go Cowboys. All right, 655, 70 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, looming mandates. States and cities scrambling to replace workers as vaccine mandates take effect. How some workers remain defiant despite losing their jobs. And one COVID survivor's message about getting the vaccine. Plus, delayed vote. Democratic leaders postponing a vote on the infrastructure bill as progressives and moderates wrangle over reconciliation. Can the party reach a deal on two major spending bills? And what will happen with the debt ceiling? as the deadline looms and Powerball numbers announced Saturday's jackpot reaching six hundred and thirty five million dollars. Could you be the lucky winner? The latest on that winning ticket. It's all ahead here on GMA. 70 degrees at the airport here in San Antonio at 69 JBSA Randolph, 73 at Stenson, 64 Bernie Stage Airfield, and 64 in Comfort. Today, temperatures are going to ramp up to near 90 degrees in spite of the fact that a cool front is going to move through. That'll switch around our winds to the north and increase clouds uh, throughout the day today. There's only a 10% chance for rain, so don't bank on rainfall today. Uh, as for the rest of the upcoming week, we are going to have low humidity and cool mornings as well as comfortable afternoons. So that's about as good as you can ask for in early October for us here. 
Thank you, Sarah. And speaking of cool mor mornings, coming up at 8 o'clock in the morning, our, our 8 o'clock show, mm -hmm. Jonathan Cotto will be live at the Corn Maze. Oh, right. great. Yeah, fall feeling. There you go. Fall feeling. Also at 8 a.m., we have Leading SA. We have Dr. Robert Leverance with UT Health San Antonio coming on. He's going to go over the latest on boosters, vaccines with kids, and the possibility of a winter wave. See you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Gunfire in an apartment complex on the north side ends with a man in critical condition. We have the latest on the investigation. Plus, Dr. Robert Leverance with UT Health San Antonio joins us live to talk about a variety of topics ranging from booster shots to herd immunity. And if you're looking for something to do later today with your family, we'll tell you where you can head out for some fun coming up next. As you can see with Jonathan Cotto's live shot, it is sunny out there. It's 70 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. 8 o'clock this Sunday, October 3rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Did you hear a goat in the background of his of Jonathan's shot? Must have been Tom Brady. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we are all wearing pink today, or at least my attempt at pink. Apparently, this is fuchsia. I think it's Barbie pink. It's close enough. I like that. Is Bar that a new yeah. color? Yeah, Barbie Dreamhouse pink. Okay, Not Sarah that I Spivey, had one would you agree that this is uh, Barbie Dreamhouse pink? I'm sticking with fuchsia. I like but, it. But, you know, the reason we're wearing pink, of course, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now, looking outside, you can see there are some clouds this morning, but the sun is shining through those clouds, a mixture of height and cirrus clouds and some mid-level clouds out there as well. It is pretty mild this morning. Temperatures are generally right near 70 degrees, 70 at the airport, 69 at JBSA Randall, 73 at Stinson. Meanwhile, though, the higher elevations outside of the city center, it's 63 degrees up at Bernie Stage Airfield, 63 in Cumberland. And in Kerrville, 68 in Hondo. Uh, it's 67 in Lost Maples, 72 down in Pleasanton, and 70 in Seguin. Now, today is Sunday. A lot of people are going to be enjoying a backyard barbecue. Mostly cloudy skies today. It will be muggy. We are expecting a weak cool front to move through today around noon. That'll turn our winds around to the north at 5 to 10. But it's still going to be a warm afternoon. In fact, temperatures should climb to near 90 degrees this afternoon. And we really won't see any pleasant effects from this cool front until later on this week, mainly tomorrow afternoon. The humidity is going to get pretty low and it's going to feel great for several mornings in the week ahead. I'll have a look ahead in just a few moments. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now for a look at your top stories this morning. San Antonio police say a domestic disturbance on the city's north side led to gunfire. That's right. Here's what we know right now. It happened around 1030 last night at the Hilltop at Chavano Apartments on the city's north side. Officers there tell us that when they arrived to the scene, a woman was outside with neighbors telling police that she shot a man in self-defense. Police say they found the victim, the man in his 20s, inside the apartment with multiple gunshot wounds. Now, officers started performing life-saving measures before he was taken to the hospital in critical condition. We are still waiting for the details in this disturbance. The investigation is ongoing, but police say right now that woman might not face any charges. Well, meanwhile, there was heavy police presence overnight at the Costa Almedina apartment homes. That's on South New Braunfels Avenue. Details are limited at this time, but we do know that law enforcement was out there for about seven hours. We were following, we're going to be following this story very closely throughout the day, and we'll have the latest updates posted on our website, ksat.com. And two northwest side shootings, four possible victims, and no suspects in custody. San Antonio police responding to two separate calls located less than 10 minutes apart just yesterday. The first call for the shooting was at the intersection of Fredericksburg Road and Medical Drive around 1 p.m. Officers tell us the victim was standing at the corner of the intersection. Someone drove up to him, asked if he had any drugs, then shot the man in the leg before taking off. The victim, who is expected to be okay but expected to recover, taken to the hospital by another driver who saw him laying on the ground. Police say another possible victim walked across the street to Raising Canes, and he was picked up by another individual. Well, a couple of hours later, police were called to Danny K Drive. That's near Babcock. Police say two men were from out of town in their 30s and 50s. They were parked behind an apartment complex when a third man came up to their vehicle and shot them, allegedly. They were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The suspects in both shootings are unknown at the time, and police did say they were not connected. 
while we are still in the midst of this pandemic, the most recent San Antonio COVID dashboard reads that we are at a moderate risk level and we are improving. But with the winter months still on the way, it seems like we are still far from done with this virus. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Robert Leverance with UT Health San Antonio. Thank you so much, doctor, for making time for us this morning. Thanks for having me. What percentage of San Antonio would you like to see get vaccinated to reach the idea of herd immunity? And if we do reach that number, what does that really mean? Great question, Max. Uh, right now, about two thirds of San Antonians are vaccinated, so we're making really good progress. But with Delta virus, it's not quite good enough. We thought we, can reach her, we could have reached herd immunity with two thirds before Delta, but Delta is much more infectious. So I would say we need to get up near 90% uh, uh, vaccination rate. And what does herd immunity mean? It means that so many people are immune to the virus that it cannot spread so rapidly and turn into a crisis like it has here. So eventually we'll get there, but the sooner we get there, the better. If we do and when we do get to hum herd immunity, is it going to be something like where COVID's always here, kind of like the flu where we have like a COVID season along with the flu, but maybe just not as many hospitalizations or deaths? Right. Most experts say that, you know, COVID's not going to leave the planet. Uh, it's here and, and is now part of the human condition, similar to uh, the flu. But the good news is that if we could tame it, if you will, like we've done with the flu, then we can live with it, get a COVID shot once a year and otherwise live normal lives. And we have seen our vaccination rate tick up throughout the last couple of months. Do you forecast another wave of the virus in the winter or in the spring? Well, it is concerning. We know that cold virus is like cold weather and we're going into another winter. And I'd say some factors are aligning that um, could pose a, a bad winter surge. We don't know that for sure. But we had a bad surge last winter, and yet um, school was not in session, and yet it is in session this year, where 20% of our population is mingling indoors, mostly vulnerable and unvaccinated. In addition, we've had a late summer surge, and so uh, that can act as a biologic springboard, if you will, for um, a surge this winter. Of course, uh, the higher our vaccination rate is, uh, the less likely we'd have that surge. And so I, I do wanna put a plea out for, for folks that haven't been vaccinated yet. First of all, I think it's, it's well known by now that you know, this, this crisis is the worst crisis uh, this nation has ever suffered in terms of lives lost, uh, more than any prior war or any pandemic. Yet if you look outside, you wouldn't know it. It's deceiving, things seem pretty well. And so for those who've been unvaccinated, I could understand you want your questions answered um, or if you have some doubts, I think that's very fair. What I ask is this, I, I just ask that you speak to a trusted healthcare individual that you know, whether it's a, a nurse in your clinic or your doctor or even a, a healthcare worker in your community or church. You know, dur during normal times, we trust our well-being, if not our lives, to these individuals. And I just asked for this question, we would trust them with um, this question as well. So Dr. Leverance, booster shots are becoming more available and more popular. So what is your recommendation and when should people get their booster? Boy, you know, with each step of this uh, pandemic, it gets more tedious and complex in terms of the, uh, the vaccines and now the boosters. Right now, the, the Pfizer vaccine is approved for uh, boosters for people over the age of 65 people with uh, certain chronic medical conditions, including just being overweight. That's a lot of people. And then finally, people who are in high risk occupations, such as teachers, first responders, healthcare workers, grocery store workers and the like. So not everybody is eligible for a booster right now. Again, it's only for those that have had the Pfizer series, but a lot of people are. I would say the best way to stay on top of it is just to monitor the CDC website. Uh, that's the source of truth uh, and it's very available on the web. Now, there have been two big pieces of news this week. We know about the possible antiviral pill from Merck and a setup meeting with the FDA on children's vaccine shots. What can you tell us about these two different topics? Those are both uh, very exciting, Matt, Max. Uh, first, for the uh, vaccine availability for children 5 to 11 years old, Pfizer has submitted their data to the FDA. The FDA will be reviewing it. Soon, Pfizer will request a formal uh, emergency use authorization. So we're hoping uh, by the end of this month or early in November, we'll have vaccines available for children. Uh, and that's important because once again, they represent 20% of the population and now they're gathering indoors every day during the week. So this is important. And once it's available, boy, it'll be important to get our kids vaccinated. 
The other important matter that you just mentioned is the, the new pill that looks like may be available to treat COVID. And uh, that's being put out by Merck. They indicate that they're gonna pursue an emergency use authorization as quickly as they can. Uh, the studies they did showed it reduced hospitalizations by 50% and uh, death even more. So that could be a real game changer if we had a pill to treat COVID. I think for those that are hesitant to get the vaccine, uh, yeah, they may not want the vaccine when they're feeling well, but I think they'd be likely willing to take a pill when they were feeling poorly. Well, Dr. Leverance, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure answering all of our questions. And for our viewers watching this, you can watch the full interview later this morning on KSAT.com. Thank you, doctor. All right, thank you. Well, it's October and that means all things fall. We love fall here from pumpkin spice lattes to haunted houses. But if you're looking for somewhere to take the kids, South Texas largest corn maze is now up and running. That is right. It is happening all month long over at Traders Village. Our Jonathan Cotto join us live with the details this morning. Good morning, Jonathan. Are you lost yet? <laughs> yeah, I'm always lost, Max. <laughs> Just kidding. But I'm here at, you're right, the South Texas largest corn mace, joined by Trader Village marketing manager, Brian Billy. Good morning, morning Brian. Good How morning. Great, great, great. Now, this is the largest mace, and it's at a really affordable price for families to come out here. How did the planning of this great, wonderful corn mace uh, come about? Well, this is our fourth year doing the uh, corny maze and it came about because we just wanted to do something fun for the family and we had the acreage so we figured why not do a corn maze um, so this year we have a 10 acre corn maze it has three different levels in there so we have one specifically designed for little kids because in my world it was real important for kids to have their own maze kids can get empowered we tell the parents let the kids lead don't worry about it because they'll be able to find their way out plus there's a little game in there for the little kids to play they go through and they find these little checkpoints and they scratch um, a coin that has a different bee dance on there and then they come out here and they have to do the bee dance oh, cool. and then in the other two mazes uh, one is 2.1 miles the other one is 2.4 miles and there are different levels of difficulty. There are six checkpoints in each one of the mazes. So the, tr the trick is to find each one of the different checkpoints. Now, I know something that definitely wasn't around when I would uh, go to corn mazes as a child is a QR code for those who are scared of getting lost, right? Yeah, we have a little cheat code. So <laughs> when you come in, you're given a card. And on the card and on the map up here, we have a QR code. It's something new that we added. So if you scan the QR code, it pulls up a, a GPS. So you can actually GPS. GPS your way through the maze. Um, everybody thinks, well, that's cheating. Well, it just shows you where you are in the maze. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> guide you out of it. Uh, that's still the tricky part, but it does help at least yeah. in some, for some people because it gets really confusing in there. Even if you know the maze and everything, it still can get confusing because it just it's all corn. It just looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brian. Folks, there you have it. If you're looking for something to get into later today or for the rest of the month, the rest of November, you have this corn maze here with three different options. Make sure you come out here. We're going to get back to you with times, prices, and all that you can get just here, not just the corn maze. There's a lot going on here. So, Max, Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, just about 813, 71 degrees out. It's homecoming season here in Texas, oh. so you know that means flowers, bells, and ribbons. Still ahead, a viral TikTok video shows actually how much mums can cost. Plus, they're bright, colorful, typically full of candy. Later, we're looking into the history of piñatas. And up next, the beauty behind microscopes. We're going to have a close look at what happens oh, gosh. when science and artistry collide. Interesting. That one got Sarah Spivey excited. <laughs> Taking a live look. 71 degrees to start your Sunday morning. Speaking of Sarah Spivey, we're going to check in with her for your full forecast in just a bit. Mind-blowing images and video captured through microscopes prove it's not just a small world after all, but an amazing one. Since 1975, the Nikon Small World Competition has been an annual showcase for a very unique brand of visual artist, one who spends most of their time peering into a world of the unseen. Photomicrographers the world over submit stunning works, and 2021's field of finalists represents micrography's delicate balance between clever artistry and scientific discipline. You really have to have a very good understanding of the microscopes and how they form images to be able to really um, to 
to put a lot of this stuff together. First place winner Jason Kirk's image of the underside of a southern live oak leaf covered in white trichomes was a result not of one microscope shot, but literally hundreds. They have a very shallow depth of focus, so what's in focus at any one given time is really, really narrow. So you have to take a couple hundred images in some cases uh, and then kind of squish them together uh, into one final image. This layering technique is one of many, including color staining and strategic pinpoint lighting used to achieve a desired visual effect. In some cases, imagers even prompt chemical reactions at a cellular level. It's this intersection between science and art that makes Nikon's annual competition and the inspired creators at its core so fascinating. It brings these these kind of worlds uh, to the forefront to where people can see them and you're able to see something that you pass by every single day and you don't even know it's there. I'm Jeremy Roth reporting. And that last image you saw there was actually a snowflake. And what's really cool is that clouds start off as tiny microscopic particles, and then the air uh, condensates around those particles, and you get clouds that look like this out there. Mostly cloudy skies today for us. We are going to be warming up. We're currently at 70 degrees at the airport, 70 in New Braunfels. It's 66 rather in Lotus, 71 in Canyon Lake, 63 in Comfort, 62 in Kerrville and 74 in Divine. There is some fog out there. Visibility down to five miles in New Braunfels, but fog is really dense out further east toward Gonzales and Beeville where visibility is practically zero. Looking at the wide picture here, there is some showers and thunderstorms. There are some showers and thunderstorms across the eastern portion of the United States. A cool front is moving across Texas, but it's a weak front. Temperatures are not even all that much cooler behind it. It's in the 50s in Lubbock, and we're going to briefly see mornings in the 50s this upcoming week because of this front, but no significant drop in temperature for us. In the future, cast increasing clouds today, a 10% chance for a stray shower, but odds are it will not rain in your backyard today. Mostly cloud and warm high temperatures going to be near 90 degrees 91 in Pleasanton 92 for the high in Del Rio 92 in Catula 86 in Kerrville 89 in New Braunfels in San Antonio today increasing clouds will already be at 81 by noon 88 for the high temperature that cool front will be moving our winds around to the north at 5 to 10 miles per hour the sun will set at 717 and behind the front this is what we're going to see lower humidity. So even though the temperature will not be dropping all that much, the humidity will be nice and pleasant for most of the week. Low humidity. That means cool mornings and comfortable afternoons. Mornings will start to get cooler tomorrow, but you'll definitely notice the cooler morning by Tuesday when we'll be at 62, even in the 50s on Wednesday morning. And yeah, it's still going to be warm in the afternoons. High temperatures will be in the mid to upper nine, uh, mid to upper 80s rather, uh, but that is a little bit warmer than seasonably average. At least the low humidity will make it feel great outside, especially during the mornings and the evening hours. Boom. Terrence Bobby, thank you so much. 821, 71 degrees out. Hey, how about the Roadrunners? How about the Roadrunners? 5-0, and oh, huge win yesterday here at home in the Alamo Dome. We're going to have all the highlights, best catches, touchdowns, and passes of the day. Plus, a Mississippi team goes viral for showing what it truly means to be kind and put others first. We'll explain how next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. If you're from Texas, you know everything is bigger and better here, including homecoming moms. Did you do moms? No. Okay, I did. So it may seem odd to others, but it's tradition. So bo both boys and girls walk around the halls with ribbons and bells and charms attached to a big flower. I mean, on homecoming day, you just hear jingle, 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 jingle. <laughs> and it's to show their school spirit. But over the years, it's gotten pretty pricey. All right, so to get some insight on exactly how much people are spending, one person on TikTok went around asking her classmates how much they spent. One of them, one of the most inexpensive mums, only $20, but... One of the most expensive ones, $500. Oh my gosh. And, and speaking of homecoming, a student in Mississippi is going viral for showing what it truly means to be kind and put others first for Nyla Covington at Forest County Agricultural High School. She was crowned homecoming queen this week, but after receiving the honor, Nyla decided to give the crown to another student, Brittany Walters, after her mother reportedly passed away from cancer earlier that day. Nyla says the crown belonged to Brittany because she is her mother's queen. 
The oh. sweet gesture at homecoming helped bring some joy to what was such an emotional and difficult day for Brittany and her family. Wow. Such such heartwarming stories. I, I loved homecoming. Mm -hmm. I remember we would walk around with, with the mums mm -hmm. and some girls, like the dance team would give you everyone a mum. Mm -hmm. So like tw girls would have like 20 mums on them. Like you couldn't even like Never walk. Never enough mums. No, mum life. Hashtag <laughs> mum life. All right, 826, 71 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, oh. getting your beloved pet blessed. Details on the drive through and in-person event happening today. Plus, the latest when it comes to funding and the showdown in Washington, why Democratic leaders are now facing criticism. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Mass. I'm Sarah Acosta. It's Sunday, October 3rd. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we're going to check in with Jonathan Cotto at the Corn Maze in just a bit, but so far, so good. 72 degrees now, Sarah Spivey. What can we expect for the rest of the day? Well, you know, it's going to be warm today, a lot like yesterday, uh, but still fairly pleasant outside. And we are going to be seeing a weak, cool front moving through today. I'll tell you what that means for our weather in just a bit. For now, let's take a look outside. You can see those wispy, thin cirrus clouds there, 70 degrees. And dew points are pretty close to the temperatures. So we are seeing some fog east of San Antonio, mainly for areas like Gonzales and closer to the coastal plain. But here in San Antonio, Things are warming up already. We're at 70 degrees, 73 in Del Rio, 70 in Carrizo Springs, 74 in Catula. It is in the 60s in Kerrville. By the way, I saw quite a bit of people at the car wash yesterday. There was some isolated rain yesterday, but if you're hoping to get a few good days out of a clean car, you have got the green light to go get the car wash because we're going to be seeing a fairly dry stretch of weather here. Only a 10% chance for a stray shower today, but again, for the week ahead, nice and dry. Speaking of dry, the humidity will be low because of today's cool front. I'll tell you that what that means for our morning temperatures in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, now to a San Antonio woman who is behind bars after doctors reported her for child abuse. San Antonio police tell us Christina Vestal was arrested after a young girl was brought to the Children's Hospital for multiple injuries to her head, face and body. The reporting person says they got a text from Vestal saying the girl had fell off the couch. However, after doctors didn't believe Vestal's story, they notified police she's facing a felony charge of injury to a child with intentional bodily injury. Her bond is set at $15,000. Well, several hundreds of people gathering downtown this weekend to fight for women's rights. <laughs> So the protests in response to Governor Greg Abbott's controversial abortion law. Um, people attending say they want to try and get their right back to choose if they want to abort a pregnancy. The abortion law went into effect about a month ago. It is one of the most restrictive, not just in the United States, but around the world. It only gives women six weeks into their presidency to decide on getting an abortion, a time frame in which many women don't think that they even know that they're carrying. It also does not have exceptions for victims of rape or incest. A mother and daughter attending the protest shared why they are so passionate. We have the right to choose what we do with our bodies. Um, it shouldn't be legislated by white men who, who don't give a crap. I'm here to fight for my rights. This affects me too. I'm only 17, but I have a future here. Yeah, this protest, not only in downtown San Antonio, across the state and across the country, we heard several others echoing their message as well. Now, uh, they, they want the final say on what they do with their bodies. A judge presided over a three hour long hearing after the Biden administration urged a federal judge that the new abortion laws should be blocked. That judge has not said when he will rule. In your morning headlines, three parking valets in Houston were struck and killed by a driver as he avoided police. Police say officers tried to stop a driver doing donuts in a parking lot when the driver took off and lost control, crashing into the workers. The three valets who were working at a nearby sports bar were pronounced dead at the scene. The driver and a passenger were both taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Investigators are working to determine the driver was intoxicated at the time of the crash. Now to another crazy crash here in Texas. New video from the Chambers County Sheriff's Office showing a yellow plane overturning and crashing right into a highway in Winnie, Texas. Officials say prior to yesterday's crash, the plane was afloat in the 2021 Rice Festival Parade. 
Uh, officials tell us that the craft was supposed to be returned to the airport by towing, but someone thought it might be quicker and easier to fly it back instead. Luckily, even after this crash, no reports of any injuries. The cause of the crash not yet to be confirmed, but the Sheriff's Department says weather was probably a big factor. Well, now to Congress, where Democratic leaders are facing criticism over postponing a vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill. That's right. This is progressives and moderates wrangle over a much broader spending package that could include funding for social services programs. ABC's White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks has the latest. After a week of intense debate, but no deal, President Biden telling reporters he's still cautiously optimistic. I believe when the American people are aware what's in it, we get it done. Asked about the ongoing challenge of uniting his party, the president bristling. We can bring the moderates and, and progressives together very easily if you had two more votes. Which two? The Senate's more conservative Democrats, Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema, loan holdouts on a partisan budget proposal to create new social programs like paid medical leave, universal pre-K and free community college, mostly paid for in the president's plan by raising taxes on corporations and the nation's highest earners. Overnight, Senator Sinema blasting fellow Democrats, specifically progressives in the House, for delaying a vote on a traditional infrastructure package until the budget bill is done, writing the delay was inexcusable. I have never and would never agree to any bargain that would hold one piece of legislation hostage to another. The vice chair of the Progressive Caucus telling CNN the budget's latest $3.5 trillion price tag has already come down during talks, but policy debates remain. What do they think is not worth investing in that's contained in the president's proposal? We can have a negotiation, but we want to make sure as much of that agenda, along with the bipartisan infrastructure bill, passes. Now, Speaker Pelosi yesterday gave her caucus a new deadline. She says she wants a vote on that bipartisan infrastructure deal by the end of the month. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Well, back here at home, South Texas' largest corn maze is back and bigger than ever. Fourth year of fall fun. The maze will be featuring three different designs, one of them 2.6 miles long. Ooh. Wow. Don't so, get lost. So, yeah, if you're up to the challenge, our Jonathan <laughs> Cotha will tell you all you need to know. He joins us live from Trader's Village. Good morning, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, yes. is that the apple gun? Oh. Good morning. Yes, it is. This is the Apple Cannon. And let me tell you, Max, I've been having a blast. I didn't even know this was here. Brian just told me about it, and I've already gone through like four or five buckets of apples. Brian. Well, you, you see all the holes in there. That's what he was shooting. He, he made them already. <laughs> yeah. I'm a sharpshooter, right? Yeah, really yeah. good, really good. That's what we'll go with. But, folks, this is something that's uh, also a part of uh, the corn maze here at Trader's Village. Uh, a really, really fun incentive for adults and kids alike, right? Oh, yeah. This is addicting, so yeah. It's been super addicting. What can folks else, you know, we were talking about how just one price gets you access to the corn maze, the petting zoo. It's such an affordable we have the petting families. zoo, we have an inflatable slide for kids, we have activities and games, the pumpkin patch, uh, we have small and medium sized pumpkins for $5, um, and then that, that, all that comes with the price of admission. The price of admission is $9.99 per person, but we also also a combo for $14.99, and what the combo pass gets you is admission into the um, corny maze, but it also gets you an all day ride wristband to all the 11 rides that we have at Trader's Village. Not bad, not bad. So it's a pretty good deal, and then we're open to Day, Sundays from 10 to 5, and on Saturdays we're open 10 to 6, and it's every weekend in October, every weekend in November. Perfect. So two months full of weekend activities. If you have nothing else planned, I highly recommend coming out to Traders Village. I'm already extremely enjoying myself. <laughs> also, if you hit the pig, the Sasquatch, or the Captain America bullseye, there's a prize. Well, we have a we have a, a circle a, a tire that has a cowbell. So if you hit the cowbell, then yeah, you can uh, win a pumpkin. So I uh, I'm not sure if I can hit that cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> so I might just buy the pumpkin. One guy spent about 60 bucks last time to try to do it. So, he, but he was bound and determined to win. He wanted that pump. He wanted to win. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brian. Thank you for being out here oh, with us early out. this morning, us. folks. The weather has been just spectacular this morning, and we're planning on it being very nice. It's supposed the, to be beautiful today. The maze is still a little bit muddy, so if you do come out today, 
uh, make sure you do wear your galoshes or rain shoes or something or just shoes you don't mind getting muddy because it is muddy in there today but by the end of the week and by next week next weekend is going to be absolutely gorgeous so come on out there you have it folks head on out max i'm going to keep on shooting apples i'm completely hooked so if i'm late back to the station you know where i'm at <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, so even hedgehogs are invited to this drive through and in-person blessing of the animals at St. Mark's Episcopal Church today. This will be open to the public if you're interested in taking your animal. The first blessing is at the parking lot on Jefferson Street in East Pecan at 4 p.m. The second one is at the Pecan Street Courtyard at 5 p.m. Also happening today, the San Antonio Botanical Garden having an outdoor screening of 12 Mighty Orphans. Great movie tells the true story of a football team from a Great Depression orphanage. The players begin as a Bush League club without a football and they ascend to Texas State champs. Doors open for the screening, 6.30 p.m. Movie starts at 7.30. Tickets, $20 for adults, $15 for kids. Botanical Garden members receive $5 off per person. Going back to Jonathan, though, that is awesome. I want to go just for the apple cannon. You go for the maze, you stay for the apple cannon. I can see you getting super competitive. Super competitive. I was that bit. guy who spent $60 to try to get of the cowbell. Of course you were. Yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> 840, 72 degrees out. All right. Today is Sunday, but yesterday we had a whole string of great college football games. A bunch of local wins, too. Right here, UIW, we're going to have all the highlights. And, of course, UTSA 5-0. Plus, a staple item for Latino birthday parties. After the break, we're learning the history of piñatas. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. We saw Jonathan out there at the corn maze. Beautiful, 72 degrees out there right now. What does the rest of the day look like? If you want to hit the corn maze, we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. This Hispanic Heritage Moment is brought to you by Taco Cabana. The piñata has become a mainstay of Hispanic celebrations or fiestas, but many probably don't know how that tradition began. The origin of the piñata is believed to have started when Marco Polo discovered the Chinese creating figures of cows and buffaloes adorned with colorful paper to celebrate the new year. When the custom spread to Spain, the first Sunday in Lent was celebrated with the dance of the piñata. Back then, the piñatas were made of clay and later colorful paper, ribbons, and tinsel were added. As part of the religious celebrations, the person hitting the piñata was blindfolded, which symbolized faith-defying evil. And one of the more traditional shapes is the seven-pointed Sputnik, with each point representing one of the seven deadly sins. Today, piñatas are made of paper mache, come in many different shapes and colors, and are stuffed with toys and sweet treats. Don't worry, UTSA beat UNLV like they were a pinata. Boom. All right, Rashad Wisdom and the UTSA Roadrunners back at home at the Alamo Dome last night, looking to go 5 0 for the first time since 2012, hosting those winless UNLV. Boom. Frank Harris, laser. Joshua Cephas in stride, nine yard touchdown, 7 0 UTSA. Second quarter now tied at 10. Rebels driving, but Tariq Woolen stepping in front of that pass. That is a pick at the 49 yard line. First turnover of the game. Roadrunners capitalize on the takeaway, capping a 12 play, four minute drive with way for it. Boom, that's a one-yard touchdown. Sincere McCormick, sincerely fantastic. 89 rush yards for the Judson product. UTSA leading 17-10 at the break. Second half after Jamal Sam gets another pick. The Roadrunners double the lead. Wait for it, wait for it. Harris, beautiful deep ball to Corian Clark, and he is in the end zone. 31 yards, beautiful spiral. That's a touchdown, 24-10 UTSA. Cameron Friel, wait for it. We're going to wait. Number seven, work in the pocket, and then boom, gets eaten. Fourth down, that seals it. Roadrunners win it 24-17. Next up, taking on Western Kentucky next Saturday, 6 p.m. Looking to go 6-0. and And another local team, UIW, on the road last night, looking for their second straight Southland Conference win, taking on Northwestern State. Let's roll the highlights. Doesn't take long for the Cardinals to get on the board. First place scrimmage, Cameron Ward slinging it. C.J. Hardy, slipped by defender, taken off down the sideline, 47 yards all the way down to the two-yard line. Ward finds Hardy again. Don't fix what's not broken. Two-yard score, 7-0 UIW. Just 32 seconds into the game. Offense staying hot. Next possession, Marcus Cooper splitting the defenders. Like I said before, if you get past the safety, you're pretty golden. 60 yards to the house. Cardinals win it 38-27. All right. Great games yesterday. Better games today. We got Texans at Buffalo. 
We'll see what's going to happen there. Not a lot of optimism. Davis Mills, rookie from Stanford. And, of course, Cowboys-Panthers. This should be the match of the day. Cowboys, big test here. Undefeated Panthers in Arlington. We can talk about the Longhorns. We can talk about Tech. Or we can talk about the Aggies, Sarah Spivey. Let's Ooh. not. Let's not. Ooh. Do Why? I said we can talk about it. We don't have to. Well, you brought I mean, it up. You I have to bring it up. It up. It's the Good. sports segment. We had to bring it up. They lost. <laughs> Sorry. Next up, though, Jeez. next weekend. Just, it's a long season. <laughs> my Aggie tears coming down my face. All right, but it's going to be a nice day out there for us today. Uh, we've got mostly cloudy skies out there right now. It's 70 degrees. And today, a weak cool front is going to be moving through San Antonio. It is not going to be bringing us cold temperatures or even cool temperatures for that matter. It will, however, be bringing us drier air, which will make the mornings nice and cool. Uh, right now outside, though, there's still some lingering fog, especially east of San Antonio. Visibility is still down to zero in Gonzales and down to about quarter of a mile in Beeville. Again, those temperatures right close to the dew points, and that's why we've seen some fog develop this morning. But it's fairly clear around San Antonio, 70 degrees, 75 in Pleasanton, 70 in New Braunfels, 74 in Gonzales, 73 in Del Rio. It's 64 in Kerrville and 68 in Rock Springs. You got to take a wider view to see where the front is. It's 50 one in Lubbock behind the front, about 20 degrees cooler than us here in San Antonio, but some places in the 30s this morning across the Rockies. We are going to be seeing this front moving through today, as I mentioned, and behind this front there is drier air. Dew points are in the 40s in Amarillo and in Lubbock in the Panhandle. Uh, starting to see the dew points drop in Dallas, Fort Worth area as well, and so that's what we have to look forward to from this front. Not fall like weather, but at least it's going to feel nicer outside with uh, the lower humidity. Looking at the forecast for this afternoon, clouds are actually going to increase. We'll see mostly cloudy skies today. Notice how the future cast does pop up like one or two stray showers. That is possible today, but we're not really forecasting rain today or through most of next week. Waking up tomorrow, just a couple of degrees cooler behind that front. Then skies will clear and it will be dry. It will be warm near 90, but dry the key word there. And so that means that mornings will feel Feel very fall like we'll be waking up in some places in the 50s for most of this upcoming week, but around San Antonio 62 Tuesday morning 59 Wednesday, and then we'll be slowly seeing our morning temperatures pop back up again. But for today's forecast again, just a warm day for us, mostly cloudy uh, 80 one around noon and 88 for that afternoon high temperature. North winds today behind that front at about uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun will set at 717. And then look at this week's forecast. It's going to be fairly dry. No chance for rain in the forecast other than that small itty bitty chance today uh, with a high temperature near 90 degrees. So again, not necessarily feeling like fall, but at least it'll be dry outside. And we've yet to get the pollen count in, but as soon as we do, I'll be able to put that up on KSAT.com. Bobby, thank you so much. 851, 73 degrees out. Well, they're called porch pirates, and they're taking off with your packages oh. tomorrow on GMSA, how you can prevent this from happening to you. In the news you need to know before you go, a heavy police presence early this morning at Casa Almadina Apartment Homes on South New Braunfels Avenue. Details limited, but we do know right now that law enforcement was there for about seven hours. We actually just got the preliminary information from SAPD, so we're going to have the latest updates posted on KSAT.com. And we just got the pollen count in before we have to go to break. Molds are high today. That's unfortunate. They were low yesterday. Fall elm is moderate at 110 and ragweed is low as well. We're seeing some clouds increase today. It'll be a nice day. We're already warming up at 75 outside Ooh. right now. So if you're wanting to maybe barbecue this Sunday, Beautiful. just know that it's going to be warm. <laughs> we'll be looking at high temperatures near 90 <laughs> degrees today. A weak cool front moving through this afternoon afternoon. That'll make things less humid in the week ahead and sock out any chance for rain. Our morning lows will be in the 50s some mornings. Man, I know now how to make Max happy. I <laughs> okay, just got to get the barbecue. Everyone forecast. needs to get themselves a person who looks at them. At the barbecue. Like Max just Beautiful. looked at that barbecue graphic. Well, Sarah and I were talking earlier. She's like, is it too early to put up a barbecue graphic? And I was like, no, I have some buddies who got up super early to start up the brisket, get ready for the Cowboys game. There Big slate of football. Burgers look fantastic. No, though. you said 
beautiful. Yeah. It was gorgeous. Great job with the graphics, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Y'all have a good Sunday. Happy Sunday.